Hi, I'm David Ginger. I'm a professor of chemistry here at the University of Washington. And I'm Dr. Raj Giridhar Gopal. I'm a postdoctoral research associate in David Ginger's lab. Uh, we're here to talk about our recent review, which is characterizing morphology in bulk heterojunction organic photovoltaic systems. And organic photovoltaics are basically plastic solar cells that convert sunlight directly to electricity. And the question of why is everyone so interested uh, in organic photovoltaics uh, can be answered uh, because conventional inorganic photovoltaics are, are made from materials like silicon. And this is a piece of a silicon wafer here. And you can see it's not only energy intensive and expensive to manufacture, but it's also quite brittle. Whereas an organic photovoltaic, uh, being a plastic, can be manufactured uh, in a roll-to-roll -roll process, much like printing a newspaper, uh, on flexible substrates. Uh, organic solar cells uh, are of interest uh, for many reasons, one of which is that you can formulate the organic semiconductors as solutions and use them as printable inks to manufacture organic solar cells, just like you could print a newspaper. Organic solar cells are intrinsically nanostructured devices because the active organic semiconductor layer in the solar cell is composed of a blend of an electron donating and an electron accepting material. Now these two materials are blended together because light absorption by an organic semiconductor generally creates not free charges, but a neutral species called an exciton, which consists of a coulombically bound electron and hole. It's the interface between these two donor and acceptor materials that's used to dissociate the exciton into free charges. And it's necessary to have a large in internal surface area so that any excitons that are created can encounter a donor acceptor interface. Yet there's also a design tension because in addition to having a large internal surface area, you need to have continuous pathways for the electrons and holes that are generated at the interface to find their ways to the respective electron and hole extracting contacts so that you can collect the photocurrent that you've generated. Because morphology and organic photovoltaics are inextricably linked to performance, it is important that we characterize it using a variety of uh, analytical tools. For example, uh, some groups have used forms of x-ray scattering in order to analyze the crystalline structure of the underlying film, uh, as well as x-ray based spectroscopy tools such as uh, NEXAFs and scanning transmission x-ray microscopy as shown on the left and the right here. Uh, furthermore, some groups have used uh, transmission electron microscopy and electron tomography to provide high resolution images uh, in a three dimensional manner and are able to characterize the crystalline P3HT concentration throughout the film. And lastly, in our review, we discuss uh, scanning probe microscopy techniques to analyze organic photovoltaic systems. In our lab, we focus on using uh, variants of atomic force microscopy to analyze uh, these bulk heterojunction films. In AFM, we use a sharp metal tip and we raster scan it over the surface to generate an image. By co-aligning a laser spot with the tip, we can also analyze the photocurrent with very high spatial resolution. So in our lab, we use atomic force microscopy to analyze organic photovoltaic devices, such as the one shown here. In our case, we use an Asylum MFP3D system uh, using conducting tips such as the one shown here. By co-aligning a laser with the tip and shining on the surface, we can get high resolution information about the photocurrent, which allows us to link information about the morphology and therefore improve performance in bulk heterojunction devices. The application of a range of structural probes to characterize new bulk heterojunction blends should allow us to link performance with both local structure and electronic properties across different families of materials and thereby make organic photovoltaic cells become economically viable.